Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Bloody Hammer's Songs of Unspeakable Terror, out January 15th on Napalm Records. This album has 11 tracks, 32 minutes in length, and this is the band's six full-length studio album. They are a doom goth rock duo from North Carolina, but having said that, this album has more of a punk vibe, not just in the sound, but also in the overall structure that it has to offer. And speaking of that structure, this is a record that's very linear in its approach. It has a very simple, straightforward feel. It moves quick, it comes at you quicker, and then the songs just disappear. They have short amount of time, these are short compact tracks, so it has that punk vibe and how they constructed the individual songs, but then when you put them all together, the album really feels like a punk record. It has great dynamic mechanisms, it has great fluidity, great tempo, and it just moves along at a very fast pace and it feels like it's going even faster as you progress through it. The 32 minutes go by in a blink of an eye. It actually feels like the album is much shorter than 32 minutes when you're actually listening to it because the songs are catchy, the songs are hooky, and when you have an album that's this compact with those kind of uh, elements elements playing in into it, it makes the overall experience feel even quicker. Now the only thing about the structure that I didn't enjoy was having Lucifer's Light as the second last song on the album. This is a track that out of all 11 tracks breaks the mold of the record. It's more of a ballad, it has more of a goth vibe, doom goth vibe to it and how it comes across and how it's constructed. So it really doesn't feel like it almost fits in the overall DNA of this record. In my opinion, it does fit. It just doesn't fit exactly where they placed it. When you have a song like this, a song that breaks the mold, you have to be very careful where you put it in the album because you don't want to impact the overall dynamic mechanisms, you don't want to impact the overall fluidity that the record has and the playability that it gives to the listener. So if I was putting this album together, this song, in my opinion, should be either in the middle of the record, so you're dividing side A from side B, this would be the song that would break the record, that would be the end of the first side, and it would allow the listener to get re-engaged and reignited with a strong second half of the album, or you put it as the last track on the album, and this song has a little bit of a finality sound to it. It really felt to me that when I was listening to it, that this was gonna be the last song on the album. I actually got surprised when it popped a next song, almost like an encore, if you're comparing the record to a live performance. So it doesn't take anything away from the overall quality of the record, but it does hurt the overall playability or, or that fluid motion that the album has because the interruption comes towards the end and to me either comes in the middle or really at the end, not near it. Now as far as Soundscape is concerned, I love the sound on this album. It's slightly different from their previous records because like I said, it has more of a punk influence. But here is the important factor. They still kept a doom goth vibe to how the tracks come across. They're constructed from a punk perspective. The soundscape overall feels very punk, very raw, very gritty, the way the guitars drive the sound, but the atmosphere that the, the tracks have, perhaps led by the lyrical content and obviously by the vocal approach, feels doomy, it feels goth. So I like the mixture that they put together in an album like this, where they take a few steps away from their DNA, from their beaten path, if you will, but not a complete departure from their original sound. Something fresh, something new, perhaps a different look at how to create a goth doom metal album with a little bit more grittiness, with a little bit more movement, with songs that have a little bit more intensity. And I like this approach because they were able to make it work, because I felt though those two worlds were present on every single song. You could feel the punk motion pushing the track forward and how it sounded and how it was constructed. But then when you listen to the lyrics and when you feel the vibe of the tracks, you feel that doom peeking out, you feel that goth peeking out of the song. So I love the combination of these worlds and on this record that combination is flawless. The guitars, I already mentioned it, they have a little bit of a greediness to it, they're very raw in their sound and I feel like they're really the driving motion behind every single track on the album, at least nearly every single track on the album. This is definitely a record that's driven by the guitars. The vocals are perhaps riding shotgun because they have a very important role as well, but as far as the sound is concerned, this is definitely a guitar-driven album, and they have this raw approach. Now, I felt the overall sound was very consistent, was very balanced from the first to the last song, just how it was put together, how it was incorporated in each individual song is what it changed from track to track. So this allows the album to be dynamic, to, be, to have short bursts of energy with every single song, but not sound repetitive 
at all. You don't really feel like there's two songs that have similar riffs, similar sound, uh, a similar feel. They may have a similar atmosphere, but how they're put together and how they're coming across sounds very different, but still very balanced and cohesive across all 11 songs. The vocals are phenomenal. I wasn't expecting anything else. This is a consistent point as far as Bloody Hammers are concerned. Anders has an incredible tone, an incredible delivery. I really feel like a lot of the goth and the doom uh, experience that you're gonna get out of this record really comes from his delivery. It really comes from his tone. Because the songs, like I said, while feeling punk and while sounding very punk, his voice doesn't sound punk at all so he's able to bring that dna of the band he's able to bring that that um that spinal cord that's so important for a band like this and keep it intact just with his voice just with his tone and then change ever so slightly how the songs are constructed and what soundscape they have and this to me is the winning formula for an album that has that doom goth uh, in the back line as a layer if you will but sounds very punk as it moves forward i love this combination and i think his voice is one of the key elements in making it happen if if he didn't have that ability to keep that dna of the band present in the way he delivers those lyrics this album doesn't work Obviously the lyrics also play a role because he goes into the horror theme and he moves it back into the 70s and 60s. He really brings that old school of horror to life with his lyrics and he's very creative on how he merges the songs and how he creates specific songs that really bring life out of those lyrics. So all of these elements are coming together but his tone and his delivery not just makes those lyrics work, it makes the album still feel like a Bloody Hammers album just more turned into punk. And that is absolutely amazing. I love this record and I will say this, this is my favorite album from Bloody Hammers. I love this band, I love everything they've done up until this point, but I love the fact that they took a few steps outside the box with this record, but not completely breaking the mold of who they are and everything that they have done up until this point. They just morphed into something a little bit more dynamic, something a little bit more driven, something with more intensity in its sound. Now, as far as songs are concerned, I want to start off with Witchfinder General, a, a punk-driven track. I mean, that's nearly true to every single song on this record. In the sound, in the construction, in the vibe that it has, this really feels like a punk song from top to bottom. Not just in the sound, but in all the elements that it has. It has a great tempo, it's very gritty, very raw. It, it has great guitars that really push the track forward, that really guide you in terms of where you're going with this song. It's the shortest track on the record. It has a super catchy chorus. The drums add some volume, they add some presence. They're not necessarily making the song heavier, but they give the song a little bit more substance, which is important for a track that is this short, that is this compact. You wanna pack as much intensity, you wanna pack as much volume into it as possible, because you know it's gonna come and go very quickly. Next, The Ones Who uh, Own The Dark. This is my favorite song on the album. I love this track. It has this pure rock punk vibe to it. It's very gloomy, it's specifically in the verses, it feels very dark, very gloomy. Uh, it has that doom atmosphere, definitely in the verses of the song. It, it has great guitar sound, and I love how the guitar sound blends in with the vocals. The two really intertwine to give this song a lot of warmth, uh, a, a lot of movement, a lot of intensity, if you will. It becomes a little bit more brighter musically and vocally in the chorus. It changes the dynamic. It's a song that has ups and downs. The verses are definitely a little bit on the downside and then the chorus explodes a little bit more, making it more catchy, making it more hooky, making it more melodic. It allows the song to move at a very nice pace with great tempo, making it almost feel like a pop rock punk song because of how catchy it is in the chorus, how melodic it is in the chorus, how stripped down of all this negativity that makes the song feel so bright in that chorus. The verses are slightly darker, but not dark enough and not for long enough to take away all the brightness that the chorus has. And that's why it has a little bit of a pop feel in how it comes across. Very dynamic song. Last but not least, We Are The Damned. This is a very interesting song because it felt like it had a lot of elements from The Clash and The Ramones. Uh, you could almost close your eyes and think that this would be a perfect song for one of those bands, that they would have constructed a song with similar attributes not just from a construction perspective, but also from a soundscape approach. I love this track, it took me back, it felt like an old punk track. And it had all the elements of an old punk track, not just from how it sounded, but how it was put together. The psychedelic electronic undertones on this song 
definitely push the elements and it really moves this song into more of a throwback vibe and that's why I brought up the Ramones and the Clash because it dates the song. Uh, it, it gives the song a, a different era, uh, if you will. If this song was to exist in a vacuum, you wouldn't think of 2020 or 2021. You would definitely think of much older date for this track and how it feels and how it sounds. And that electronic vibe, psychedelic electronic vibe, really pushes the song back in time to a much different era. The guitars are gritty, they have great tempo, great movement. Awesome dark tone on the vocals. I really felt that that was very important for a song like this. A song that has a lot of different layers, that really has incredible vibe. Using backing vocals added also a different element. It added a little bit more thickness to the overall construction of the track, to the overall volume that the song has to offer. And it has incredible hookiness. Uh, once again, if you're constructing punk songs, you need a very simple approach in the chorus. You need hooky lines, simple lines, and this song has them in bunches. It's an earworm of a track. The moment you listen to this song, you're gonna immediately get connected with it and you're gonna remember it. it. Doesn't matter if you're gonna listen to it immediately after or if it's gonna be a few hours or a few days. This is a song that once you listen to it, you cannot just walk away from it and forget about it. It just has this ability to really stick to you and stay with you for a very long time. This is it, this is Bloody Hammer, Songs of Unspeakable Terror, out January 15th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles, use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.